All right. I hope you forgive me, Mr. Valentine. My business requires that I... He begs pardon like a hangman at an execution. But I have got a reprieve. I'm surprised. What does your father relent? No. He has sent me the hardest conditions in the world. You have heard of that booby brother of mine? That here, that has sent to sea three years ago. This brother, my father hears, has landed. Whereupon, he very affectionately sends me word that if I make a deed of conveyancy of my right will, uh, to his estate after his death to my younger brother, he will immediately furnish me with 4,000 pounds to pay my debt and make my fortune. See, this was proposed to me once before, and I refused it. But the present impatience of my creditors for their money, and my own impatience of confinement, and my absence from Angelica forced me to consent. A very desperate demonstration of your love for Angelica. And I think she has never given you any assurance of hers. You know her temper. She never gave me any great reason, either for hope or despair. Women of her airy temper, as they seldom tend to think before they act, so they rarely give any thought as to what they mean. But you have little reason to believe that a woman of this age, who has an indifference of you and your prosperity, will fall in love with you and your ill fortune. Besides, Angelica has a great fortune of her own. And great fortunes either expect another great fortune or a fool. More misfortunes, sir. What? Another done? No, sir, but Mr. Tuttle has come to wait upon you. I can't help it. You must bring him up. He knows I don't go abroad. Pox on him. I'll be gone. No, prithee stay, Tattle. You should never be asunder. He is the light and you are the shadow. You shoo one another. He is perfectly thy reverse, both humor and understanding. And as you set up before deformation, he is a mender of reputations. A mender of reputations? Aye, just as he is the keeper of secrets. Another virtue is he sets up for in the same manner. For the rogue will speak aloud in the posture of a whisper uh, and deny a woman's name while he gives you the marks of her person. He will forswear receiving letters from her. At the same time, give you her hand upon the superscription. He's here. Good time, good morrow. Scandal, I am yours. That is, when I'm yours. For when I'm of my own, or anyone else, that will never happen. How are you made? Why, Tassel, you need not much be concerned at anything he has to say. For to converse with scandal is to play at losing motive. You must first lose a good name to him before you can win it for yourself. But how barbarous that is, unfortunate for him to that the world shall think of the better of a pipe of a person for his for his calculation. I thank God, thank heaven that I that is part of my character to take care of such reputations so tenderly. Aye, such rotten reputations as you have to deal with are to be handled tenderly indeed. Aye, but why, why say rotten? Why do you say rotten when why do you say rotten when you know not the person of whom you speak? How cruel that is! Not know him? Well, that has never had anything to do with anyone that does not stink at, to all the town. <laughs> nay, but, nay, now you make a jest of it indeed. For, for there is nothing more, more of me to, as, I, as I hope to be saved. That I'm sorry, I, I need to, I've never exposed a woman uh, since I knew what woman was. And yet you've conversed with several. Speak for me to you, I have. 
I don't care if, if I own that. Nay, more. I, I'm going to say a bold word now. I never could could meddle with a woman that had to, that had to do with anybody else. How? Nay, Faith. I'm apt to believe him. Except her husband, Tazel. Oh, that. Come, let's talk about something else. Oh, hang him, let him alone. Valentine, I slept last night with your mistress and her uncle, old Forsyth. I think your father lies with Forsyth. Yes. Upon my soul, Ajanka is a fine woman. And so is Miss Forsyth and her sister. Yes, Mrs. Frail is a very fine woman, and we all know her. Oh, that is not fair. What? To tell? To tell what? What do you know of Mrs. Frail? Who? I? Upon, upon honor, I don't know whether she be man or woman, but by the smoothness of her chin and the roundness of her lips. No. No. She says otherwise. Impossible. Yes, Faith. Ask Valentine else. What? Why then? As I hope to be safe, I believe a woman only obliges a man to secrecy that that she may have the pleasure of telling herself. No doubt, Aunt. Well, but has she done you wrong or no? Have you had her? Huh? No, I. Though I have uh, more honor than to tell at first, I have more manners uh, than to contradict what a lady has declared. Well, you own it. I am strangely surprised. Yes, yes, I can't deny it. If, if, the taxes, if she taxes me with it. She'll be here by and by. How? She does me the favor. I mean... Of a visit sometimes. I did not think she granted more to anybody. Hey, what do you mean, gentlemen? Faith, nor I. But Tattle does not used to belie a woman. It's contrary to his character. How to oh. be deceived in a woman, <laughs> Valentine? Oh, barbarous. What? Why did you not tell me? You told us. Uh, and, and bid me ask Valentine. Valentine! What did I say? I hope you wouldn't bring me to confess an answer you never asked the question to. Oh, but, but, gen <clears throat> but gentlemen, this is the most inhumane proceedings. Nay, if you have known scandal thus long and cannot avoid such a palatable decoy, as this was, the ladies have a fine time whose reputations you are in keeping. Sir, Mr. Strell is time to see her stirring. Chew her up when she comes. Oh, my God. No, you'll meet her. You don't have to that way. Well, if there were, you'd have more discretion than to give Scandal such an advantage. I mean, why you're running away will prove all that he can tell her. Scandal, you, you will not be so generous. Oh, I shall lose my re reputation of secrecy forever. I shall never be seen but upon public days. And my visit will never never be a bit beyond a beyond a drawing room. I shall never be I shall never see a be bedchamber again. Never never be locked in the closet. Nor run behind a screen. Or under a table. Never never be distinguished among the waiting women but by the name of Trust me, Mr. Tattle Moore. You, you will not be so cruel. Scandal, have pity on him. He'll yield to any conditions. Any terms! Any! Come, then. Sacrifice half a dozen women of good reputation to you presently. Come where you are familiar. And see that they are women of good quality, too. The first quality. Tis very hard. What a, bar a baronet's lady pass? No, nothing under the right 
honorable. Uh, how can you major? You don't expect her names. No, their title shall serve. Oh, that's, that's the same thing. First, first remember their titles. I'll, I'll describe their, their persons. Well, begin then. But take note. If you are so ill painter that I cannot tell the person of which you or the person of which you have uh, of your picture of her, you will be condemned like the other bad painters to write your name at the bottom. Well, first to the Hey Day Oh, oh unfortunate, she's she's come already. Will you will you have patience till another time? I'll double the number. Well, on that condition. Take heed you don't fail me. I shall get a fine reputation by coming to see fellows in the morning. Scandal, you devil, are you here as well? Oh, Mr. Tattle, everything is safe with you, you know. Tattle? Oh, madame, you do, you do me too much honor. Oh, well, Lady Galliper, how does Angelica? Angelica? Manners! What? You will allow an absent lover? No, I'll allow a lover present with his mistress to be particular. But otherwise, I think his passion ought to give place to his manners. But what if his passion, what, what if he have more passion than manners? Then let him marry and reform. <laughs> Marriage indeed may qualify the fury of his passion, but it very rarely mends a man's manners. You are the most mistaken in the world. There is no creature perfectly civil but a husband. For in little time he grows only rude to his wife, and that is the highest good breeding, for it begets a civility to the people. Well, I'll tell you news. But I suppose you hear your brother Benjamin has, is landed, and my brother Forsyth's daughter has come out of the country. I assure you there's a match talked of by the old people. Well. If he be but as great a sea beast as she a land monster, will have the most amphibious breed. The progeny will be all otters. He has been bred at sea, and she's never been out of the country. Parksome, their country, their conjunction bodes no good for me, I'm sure. Now you talk of conjunction? My brother Foresight has cast both their nativities and prognosticates an admiral and an eminent justice of the peace to be the issue male of their two bodies. Tis the most superstitious fool. Now come, I must have something. Step into the next room and I'll give you something. I will all give you something. Well, I'll come if it be only to disprove you. Sir, here's the steward again from your father. I'll come to him. Will you give me leave and I'll wait on you then presently? No, I'll be gone. Come, who squires me to the exchange? I must call my sister Forsyth there. I will. I have a mind to your sister. Civil! <laughs> I will. Because I have a, a tender for your, for your ladyship. That is somewhat better, to my opinion. Well, if Tattle to entertains you, I have a better opportunity to engage your sister. Tell Angelica I'm about making hard conditions to come abroad. I'll be at her liberty to see her. I'll give an account of you and your proceedings. If indiscretion, er, if indiscretion be the sign of love, then you, my friend, are most the lover of any man I know. You fancy that parting with your estate will help you to your mistress? In my mind, he is a thoughtless adventurer who hopes to purchase wealth by selling land or win a mistress with a losing hand. <laughs> 